Hey, hey, everybody. Why not Tunish here? So, you clicked on this video, you must be interested in what I'm drawing here today. Well, I actually didn't draw this today, or yesterday, or last month. This is actually a holdover from 2021 that you guys never got to see. It was a part of my very first and only ever run D&D campaign. You see, I've been playing a game of uh, a series of games of D&D with my friends for years now, and back in 2020, I got the idea that I wanted to make one. I spent about a year crafting it, mostly homebrew. I wanted it to be perfect. An escape room of sorts, where I could drag my good friends through all the weird and wacky stuff I had written for one character known as Doc Sardonic. The premise of the game was simple. Doc Sardonic's annual Halloween bash. Three players, all of them good friends of Doc's, not really well known amongst each other, however. <laughs> they would have to go through the house and uh, find a uh, series of items that I hid for them. Sort of like a giant scavenger hunt. But I added two layers to the house, a sub-basement laboratory, and a sub-sub-basement laboratory. Amongst other things that they had to fight off that you may or may not get to hear about later. Now, Doc had a series of pets. And that's actually what I'm starting with here. First and foremost, though, we have Narc Narc, the little guy I'm drawing now. Up in the top left-hand corner, uh, as I scroll by every now and again, you might see his original design. He was one of the first little pets I ever made for Doc. An adorable little three-foot beanbag boy. Yeah, sort of like a sloth of sorts. <laughs> yeah, with an elephant trunk and green fur and not at all like a sloth. <laughs> and over there on the right side, you might see an Adobe Illustrator image that I took a few years ago, back in, I believe, early 2021. The first time I ever designed him like this. You see, in order to match the uh, high quality of terror and chaos that I held for my friends, Narc Narc had to go through major modifications. I made him nine... No, wait, no. I made him 12 feet tall and actually redesigned him in D&D &D based on... I think it was called the Bulgura, a large D&D &D ape creature. And known for just being a hulking beast that could throw you up against the mountain. <laughs> now, of course, the uh, image over to the far right that I'm using as reference here, I couldn't really go with that. My art had improved significantly over the year, and Narc Narc was in for a major, major redesign. But I still needed to keep both images here for clarification and reference. I didn't want him to change too much. Just enough that he looked really cool. Now, the theming of the Halloween party that all the friends were invited to as part of the D&D uh, &D plot, it had a bit of a theming to it. Looking back on it, uh, the entire game was sort of a fever dream <laughs> of my creation uh, because it just had so many interconnecting parts. Uh, 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 what is it? References to other nerdy things I enjoy. Uh, there's a Five Nights at Freddy's uh, link in here somewhere. But the theme for the party was actually a carnival setting. The Carnival of Horrors proudly presents the Strongman. Which is what Narc Narc ended up becoming. All my monsters I modeled very loosely based off of classic carnival freaks from... Uh, anywhere between the mid-1800s to early 1930s. You know, the classics you always heard about. The two-headed man, the, the, the strong man, uh, torso boy, I think was one of them. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't use all of them. I always knew for a fact, though, that Narc Narc had to be the strong man, just because it was really funny to me. This adorable squishy beanbag boy turned into this horrifying thing. <laughs> uh, 
you can see me uh, working right now on doing the hands. And looking back on it, I wish I had kept up with this pose I'm drawing right now. I, I later chucked it in favor of, for what was at the time, an easier pose for me to draw. Uh, which really wasn't necessary, because I was on the right path. I just, I wasn't as good enough of an artist as I am now to really notice it. Narknark Nark is supposed to have these uh, little claws. He's sort of like a three-toed sloth. Little long pinchers. And that uh, translated to these gigantic hulking claws I'm drawing now. You know, looking back on him, the Hulk is a very, av uh, is a very accurate uh, analogy for what he is. Uh, he's large, he's green, and he could definitely kill you in a punch. He was designed to be the very first monster that would ever appear. Mainly because I had an idea, at least, on where my party was likely to go. Uh, what they were likely to do first in their adventure through the house I had left them in. I, uh, I basically knew exactly where to put Nark Nark. And uh, he was a sort of triggered event. You would have to find uh, the area in the laboratory where he broke out of. Uh, it, it was the pet zone. A uh, smashed up door that leads you to believe that either something desperately wanted in or something desperately wanted out of the containment cell. <laughs> and here he would come charging up. I actually had the perfect sound for him uh, to initiate battles. Uh, it was a cross between the uh, the uh, the sound off of an elephant's trunk and a T-Rex. <laughs> just just absolutely put you on end, uh, put you on edge. Yeah, you you thought you were gonna survive. You thought you were just gonna walk through and find clues. Maybe check out that scavenger hunt. No, 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 no. Here's this gigantic beast here to ruin your night. <laughs> Uh, spoilers, a uh, spoiler alert, of course. Uh, I don't know if any of you are ever going to be able to hear the full, uh, audio, uh, the full, like, 18-hour audio transcript of the game we ran. God only knows, but I, I do hope. But, uh, they actually managed to take him down pretty easy. <laughs> uh, let's see, Mouse, uh, his character had this, had this little trick up his sleeve. Actually, if memory serves, this one is on YouTube. This part right here. Uh, it's one of the few episodes that did make it to YouTube. Mouse had an ability that basically let him... I believe it was charm or just basically mind control uh, any creature with a low enough uh, wisdom score. And I did create uh, Nark Nark to be both large, strong, but sadly very stupid. <laughs> so he got that no problem. Uh, before he could even really throw a punch, uh, Mouse basically brainwashed this guy and added him to the party. Uh, they were able to break into a few more uh, areas in the lab after that, uh, but not much else. Here is a uh, coloring technique that I've been doing for a few years now. People get on to me about it every now and again when they see me do it. Uh, I never found a, I, I never found the proper way to fully color in an area in uh, Photoshop, just in one bucket tool. It never worked for me, especially considering every individual color you see here on screen is a different layer that I've drawn on. But, you know, I honestly just enjoy doing it this way. And I'm too lazy to figure out the correct way. <laughs> I don't know, there's something very relaxing about just coloring it into a circle. I have multiple different tones here for his hair. Just to give him a little bit of variation. There's not really any shading at all. But I, uh, I did know that his head and his body and his face all needed to be three different colors. Overall, I think Nark Nark came out exceptionally well here. Uh, from the musculature to the uh, the fur everywhere to just the outright expression he has on his face. Yeah, like he's clearly ready to eat you. <laughs> but thanks for sitting uh, with me here through this little commentary. As always, I hope you had a wonderful time and I hope you're entertained. Good night, everybody. Now, 
how do I properly stop this? <laughs> 